trying to play with somebody. Is there somebody in here? Hello. I don't know if the cat wants to play with you. absolutely beautiful April day, the best you can kind of get actually. So we're going to get outside and actually it's D-Day, we need to tackle the greenhouse today. We need to clean it, tidy it, sort it and then get planting because it's April already so I need to be planting and sowing as many seeds as possible. But first, let's go and check on that hen. Um, the past couple of days she's kind of been much the same, she's had days where she's perked up um, and then gone downhill again so she's been up and down so let's go and take a look. Well, it's been a couple of days and that hem was getting a little bit better but still looking peaky uh, but I've just come down now and as expected we have lost her she's just down here on the floor sadly so we will uh, bag her up and send her away now remember in the UK it's actually illegal to bury a hen in your garden uh, they are classed as livestock um, so obviously being a good livestock keeper uh, this means I need to get rid of her properly and that means mainly you should take her to an incinerator plant but again if you um, contact your local council many councils just say double bag them and put them in the, the, the rubbish uh, with the rest of your collection and they will deal with them so unfortunately that is her fate she was ill I don't know exactly what was wrong with her so I'm not going to eat her I'm not going to feed her to my dogs um, because again, I don't know exactly the exact cause of her death, even though I'm fairly sure it wasn't anything uh, transferable, transmittable, um, because everybody else is fine. And I've seen this symptom in expats over and over and over again. I'm just not going to take the risk. Uh, but that is sadly a bit of a, a downer end to that little uh, hen story. Um, but I'm not totally surprised. I've seen that symptom so many times with expats and they just don't recover. And I know a lot of you will mention antibiotics and taking it to the vet, um, but I've just seen that so many times that I know antibiotics would have not have cured um, that problem at all. It's a normal, quite a fast acting, uh, whatever it is, it's like a, just the body giving up. Um, there's not a lot you can do to save them. You just make them comfortable. And obviously it was quite quick, a couple of days of being sleepy uh, and then and then she died. As you can see we're in the greenhouse and look I have cleaned it so we finally have clean glass I mean it won't stay clean for long because the chickens who are through here like to jump up and uh, sit along here but we have cleaned it which is great so we're getting ready for spring and look it's not as messy uh, we've tried I'm a hoarder uh, I never ever am I going to use all of these plastic pots but it's plastic and so I can't bear to throw it away just in case I do need it at some point. So all the pots are down there. We've got a few things to sort out here. These are sort of the trays and stuff that I can sit plants in um, and uh, there's more of uh, water tight containers that I can sit plants in. Now if you are a succulent lover look away now uh, because there is a horror show coming up. Um, it's you know rated 18 but this is the state of my poor little succulents which have been left completely neglected and you can see the poor little things are quite frazzled this lip this um, lip curl this uh, leaf curl is because they are underwatered and you can see all the redness on here um, to be fair 
I haven't looked after them properly for about a year and they're still alive, so I'm pretty impressed. I'm gonna give them, I bought some succulent food, so I'm gonna give them some nice succulent food. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to hopefully try and rescue these out a bit. Um, I've got a few of the other plants that I showed you the, the other day in here. But my main thing today is I need to get um, sowing. Because, as I said at the beginning, now is the time to really get everything going. Now, I always sow either too few or too much. So this year, I'm just going on the too much basis. Um, because it's always better to have too many plants than too few. Uh, so let's get going. So when I said I had a few seeds, uh, you can see just a few. Um, there's an assortment of a lot of different stuff. So I've got veggies and I've got flowers. I'm really excited. I mentioned it um, in the previous video. A lovely patron of mine sent me some packets of uh, heritage seeds or heirloom seeds from Australia. Um, so I've got this tomato green zebra. Um, a colleague of mine grew it last year and it's amazing. It's just a striped uh, green tomato tastes really really good um pumpkin iron bark so i'm definitely going to put a load of those in i haven't got a masses of space but i have got a big pile of chicken dung which will be perfect for a couple of pumpkins and then i've got some billy buttons which are an australian native uh some helipterum uh, pero and some tansy uh, which are all going to be great little heirloom seeds um he also sent me this rather wonderful bottle top watering can which is very very cool and because I am always forgetting to mark stuff I have some uh, some labels as well which is really really good um, and then the rest of it is just a random mix so I've got, as you can see I've got some I've got some herbs coriander I've got some turnips um, I've got I'm going to start a few cucumbers and then I've got tons of seeds as well um, to get some uh, seeds. Of course I've got seeds, they're all seeds. I've got some flowers, so of course I've got cosmos, uh, I've got some marigolds, some echinacea, um, I'm going to do some more artichokes for up at the farm, um, some lovely little violas. So I'm going to basically fill this entire greenhouse with seeds. Well, I've got to say, a couple of hours spent cleaning, tidying, and then sewing in the greenhouse is good for the soul, especially on a day like this, and when you can get nice and grubby hands, get your fingers in the dirt, and just relax. Um, so, I've got tons in here now. So, as you've seen, I've sewed loads. So, these were all the plants I had before, and I've now got four shelves of seeds. 
um, all sewn up, ready to go. Now, you obviously saw me direct sewing those tiny seeds. You don't have to do that. Um, you can just uh, direct sew the bigger seeds and then the smaller seeds, you can just sort of cast them if you're um, sewing in seed trays, especially in seed trays like this, you can just cast them. But I was having fun and relaxing. So I thought, well, what the hell? I might as well just direct sew uh, them as well. I've also potted up a couple of uh, overwintering dahlias and I've also potted on some of my um, tomato plants that are coming. So. As you all know by now, uh, bury the stem as much as you can. This one could actually do with a bigger pot, so I could have buried it up to there. But bury the stem as much as you can because they'll um, set out some roots and they'll make stronger, uh, nicer plants. So I definitely think it's time to head inside for that much needed cuppa after spending m much of the day actually in the, uh, in the greenhouse sorting it all out. And I must, 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 and I say this every year, continue to look after the plants because it's all very well and good sewing everything and get going, but I'm, I'm one for forgetting to do things. Uh, so I must remember to come down here, water, keep the humidity up, pot on, prick out as things come on, and also kill pests, kill aphids, kill whiteflies, kill snails, things like that as we go on. If you like the video, as always, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're over on Facebook. Feel free to come and join us at Brimwood Farms Community Group. But for now, I'm gonna go and have a little sit down, so I shall say goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you.